Welcome to the Sliders and Wings, a podcast about the TV show Sliders. And the TV show Wings. And all the other forgotten TV shows of the 90s. I'm Valerie Temple. And I'm Rachel Cox. Our special guest today, Dan Heyer, he was worried about having a bad microphone and I was like, uh, tell it to the... <laughs> you pronounced my name correctly the first try. That takes a, a few attempts. Do people say Heyer? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Is it like the air conditioning company? H A I E R? I don't, I don't know. They get confused. They get Higher. confused. Let's jump. No, I'm right? confused. That's yeah. right. You don't even know what's what. <laughs> Up yeah. is down, left is right. <laughs> hey, anyway, anyway, Dan is here with us today to talk about Shusha. Susha. Shusha. Shusha. Susha. No, Shusha. Every article said it was pronounced Susha. No, did you watch the show? She says Shusha. I mean, she doesn't really. <laughs> yeah. It's Shusha. I can confirm. Shusha. Okay. No, I thought it was yeah. Shusha, but then I was reading the article and it said pronounced Susha. And I thought, oh. Okay. Well, that's the funny thing because all the articles made a big point about how you're supposed to say it. And it sounds like half of them didn't even get that right. <laughs> No. no, it was strange that they were basically saying pronounce these two X's differently. I was like, well, that's weird. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't come across that. They were saying if they were saying su sha, <laughs> then one is a S and one is a sh. I already feel insane. Yeah, that's the first topic of housekeeping for next week. <laughs> How I mean, do you <laughs> pronounce Let me do. Susha. Let me do a little background. Though. But so, I mean, the, the, Rachel, they they chanted at the beginning of every episode. Yeah, shu sha, shu sha, shu sha. I know, but I thought they were wrong because these were American kids. Um, <laughs> these were 500 american children hired to just wander around a lot it's like, somewhere in miami or la i don't know this is classic overthinking yeah Honestly, within the first three seconds of the show it's a big confusion do we know what we're talking about at all that's right. not in instilling faith in anybody I imagine okay let's ground this show this show is about the um, brief american tv program version of shusha which was a brazilian very super popular. I mean, she's basically the kind of like madonna for kids she's, of brazil she's the queen yeah. of the children right there's nothing really comparable yeah, that's it's like captain kangaroo and madonna it, everything about it was very ABBA. The music was very ABBA. It felt so ABBA to me. And she's blonde. Oh, and her, yeah. And I can't mean, really speak English. I mean, it was very ABBA. Dan is Australian. I have an Australian affiliation. And when my parents were living in Tasmania, sorry, this is an ABBA segue. When my, parents, <laughs> when my people don't realize that ABBA was as big, if not bigger, than the Beatles in Australia, or this is what my parents told me. Maybe your parents told you differently, but they said that. Um, I think that's true. Okay. Because on, on the radio, when they were living in Tasmania in the 70s, there was like that they were having a conversation on the radio like who's better ABBA or the Beatles and they couldn't decide <laughs> it was just too close <laughs> that's not a bad accent accent corner it's a, yeah, like, I'm, I'm scared to do anymore my <laughs> right? she's like gonna quit while she's ahead you know <laughs> my accent corner my notes for that for this episode by the way is just are you kidding <laughs> like <laughs> oh man yeah this is accent corner of the episode yes shusha so but this seemed okay so from what i read about her the show that she ran i mean trying to read that wikipedia was you were like oh the wikipedia is insane and i said oh i'll go look at it and i think i read it for about 15 minutes before i was like whoa i should not have started reading this like it was clearly written it was first of all it was clearly translated from portuguese yes yes you can tell totally. because e everything every gender of every person is wrong it's when it's saying he it and kept she. talking about the paternity of her company I was like, what <laughs> are they talking about? Yeah, the, um, the but it phrasing... was like written by her manager or something. So it was like every last business transaction she had ever done, every <laughs> real estate deal, every merger, like every single thing is in there. And I was like, whoa, I shouldn't have read this. But, but, but it said that the show or some, I read so many articles now, I don't know. But what the show that as it ran in, in originally in Brazil was like five hours long. It was like Hoda and Kathy on the today show yeah because it was kind of a cartoon you know the, they'll put the cartoons in between right. Shusha segments and yeah but and also it said that brazil oh, it's like only country that watches more tv than americans yeah <laughs> yeah I, that that's true there's a very strong culture of tuning into the exact same thing oh. as everyone else is watching like every night even yeah now? even even right now um like what I guess we would all think of as the standard daytime TV soap is like the primetime material here. Really? And and uh, so there's, you know, the telenovelas, like there's a, like a five hour block of that every night and um, everyone's going home to watch that uh, because I'm kind of right in the 
middle of the city in Sao Paulo. So um, yeah, Dan's, whenever... Dan's coming to us from Brazil right now. So he is going to explain what's going on with Brazil on the street <laughs> reporting from Brazil. So yeah, 30 years late. But um, <laughs> with TV here, if something dramatic uh, or big in the narrative <laughs> happens, the whole city just starts making noises and um, turning its lights on and off in like some protest or whatever. I mean, it could be the wow. telenovela. The other night it was like a big brother exit. Is it so also because this... that most people don't have, most people only have like the regular networks, I would guess, and don't have cable? Yeah, yeah. Or do and, they not have streaming services? And also, people are still well, watching no, that, that's a, Yeah, that's all here. I think they just prefer what, uh, what there is to keep up with, you know? Yeah, I've also noticed that like Brazil is very like, the stan culture is really big. It seems uh -huh. like there's a lot, there's like jokes about how it's so celebrities are always getting come to brazil in their comments oh yeah yeah it's because no one really comes to brazil <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yes. yeah like there's all the imports here and so you like, know, please come uh, can i just say a few sentences of background yes yes okay, okay. so I remembered in the 90s that I heard of this woman who was Brazilian and had this kid's show was popular. That is the last I thought about Zusha until a few weeks ago when you, Zusha, when you told me that we were going to do this show. So it seems like they tried to make, she's huge in Brazil, so they tried to make her huge here. I mean, she's huge in all of Latin America, right? She has Spanish, she had Spanish language shows too. She would record yeah, yeah. in Portuguese and in Spanish and like was just broadcast all over Latin America and Central America. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to make her happen in the US and basically it was a big flop because she came, made this, it was much different. It was like a shorter show unless they were, unless the things we were seeing on YouTube were edited down, but they were only like 22, 25 minutes and they're all on YouTube basically. But between September and December, 1993, and it, was, it wasn't on a particular network, it was syndicated. So I don't even right. know where you would have seen this, but uh, they uh, made 60, I, I can tell five you. episodes. <laughs> okay, 65 episodes. So she's basically a young, beautiful woman who used to be a model and used to date Pele. And, and John, F. John F. Kennedy Jr. Oh, and yeah, John F. Kennedy Jr. also made that very disturbing softcore <laughs> porn film where she has sex with a 12 year old boy. Yeah, it's called, I mean, it, English title is called like Love Strange love and <laughs> yes. she was 19 when she made it and it features uh, a couple scenes of a uh, sexual encounter yeah no I'm sorry it's so, so, not real yeah it's not it's, real it's, it's not a, no it's 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 a fiction film yeah it's, it's not a, like it's, it's, film. it's no. not uh erotica per se yeah it's, it's just a gross it, movie an erotic drama yeah yeah i i was looking at the wikipedia page for that and i couldn't read it <laughs> because it, <laughs> it had like the world's longest plot synopsis and it seems to involve a lot of like political intrigue or whatever. And so the Shusha stuff is seems very minimal, but it of course has like followed her for the rest of her career. I mean, yeah, she, she sued to try to get her name not to come up with the word pedophile or something and Google, I don't know, it didn't work. Right. Yeah. Um, she sued Google. But when I was yeah. watching the show, I was trying to think, okay, so like how many crossover things have come from Brazil to the U S and I can only think of three. Okay. Carmen Miranda, the Brazilian wax and the Brazilian <laughs> steak. And really, we're not interested in anything else. Can you think of anything else, Dan? Uh, that's ended up in America? Yeah. Um, do you have caparinhas there? It's, I, that's a, we the, do. The drink. It's basically kind of like a mimosa. Oh, okay. Wasn't there like uh, the World Cup was in Brazil and like everyone got obsessed with those like weird... Oh, things? Vuvuzelas. <laughs> Vuvuz <laughs> that's well, what in, I... In America, they got obsessed with those? Oh, yeah. Everyone was like, what are these things? What are they? Because they look like <laughs> pool noodles. And everyone yeah, was like, yeah. what? That was a brief American fad. I mean, Carmen Miranda <laughs> died young. She might have not made it long term. Shusha is a show that I watched as a kid, not like regularly because it was syndicated. So it was but this version, the American version. Yes. Okay. So, and it is one of those things where, you know how, like, I feel like everyone has something from their youth where you're like, did I dream that? Was yes. that, was that real? Shusha is that. So like, I didn't have, I didn't have cable. So, and, but I loved TV and especially in the nineties when you didn't have cable, there were some real dead zones of programming blocks where there was just like nothing to watch. And so I would just be like cycling through trying to find something. I, w I ended up watching a lot of PBS, which I called cable for poor people because <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a little 
different. Let me let me watch the frugal gourmet, a little Bob Ross or whatever. But like, that's I definitely, generally less kind of commercial fare, isn't it? Yeah, if I'm correct. It's a little bit more specialty, and mm -hmm. shoe shoe was definitely something I caught on uh, at least <laughs> one or two occasions just kind of like trying to find, it was just like a random like it was like sunday at two or something weird yeah so you never intentionally mm, <laughs> tried never, to watch it so never it's kind of like a dream that, yeah. Uh, yeah and also it confused me because i would watch it kind of went in fascination because there's so many kids on the stage and they all seem to be so excited about seeing her so it seemed like there was something I was missing like she was a big star and like I had missed it somehow and I was trying to figure it out and also they all seemed to know the the lyrics to her songs <laughs> so it just it really felt like this was something beamed from a different planet uh, it reminded me of Unaria Academy of Science um, cult their like recruitment videos from I guess about the 80s or maybe into the 90s just you know these uh, glowing vibrant beings uh, landing in spaceships uh, bringing peace and, and joy and everything and I mean the original Shusha in Brazil you know she comes out of a spaceship which <laughs> opens uh, from a, a, a big set of red lips I went deep into Shusha I was I was like I gotta watch more and i also wanted to know what the brazilian version of the show was like i was like mm -hmm. it, does it make more sense in brazil like what was that i watched it too it looked basically the same it but looks with, with way more way <laughs> yeah. more adults in the audience enjoying themselves right and like, the but, parents were like hey. <laughs> But yeah, it's a pink, <laughs> the show starts with a giant pink sh spaceship landing. The spaceship is covered in giant red lips and she comes out and then like there are like little changes. Like there's like a tall guy dressed as a yellow spider and then like a dwarf <laughs> dressed as a turtle who, you know, I guess in the American version, those are those furries. Yeah, um, the furries, man. Uh, and they have like a, a kind of a Shining-esque quality yeah. because like the the zoom it right into them is just their names are <laughs> horrifying. Yeah, their names are like <laughs> jelly and jam. Oh, they and, have names. Yeah, I looked it up. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Jelly and jam, and it's a, a panda and a cheetah. And the che the guy dressed as a cheetah is like just constantly doing backflips. And those guys are, are doing a lot of heavy lifting in terms of talking. Yeah, uh, yeah. they are talking a lot. Like it's rescue. very echoey inside their helmets. So they wanted to bring Shusha to America, and Shusha like learned English to do this English. I mean, kind of. <laughs> yeah. That, well, that. That's I mean, that, this is the problem she, with the entire show. Is that she? she can't speak English. Exactly. She, she tried. Um, I but... am not faulting anyone for not knowing another language. One of her <laughs> anthems is about her struggling with the language. Talk to me, right? <laughs> It was yeah. really sad. Like, I yeah, yeah, it's pretty. I mean, that's it was touching. It was like almost an apology. Like the lyrics, yeah. literally included. I'm trying really hard. I know, uh, like, <laughs> like th there was a lyric that was like, I've worked a long time on the vowels, <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, like, the, and the chorus is like, talk to me. Like she really wants someone to like talk to her. It it really killed me. That was in the that was in the butterfly man episode which i have to say yeah. i oh, skimmed i i fast forwarded through the butterfly one i just watched a bit i mean as someone with no connection to the show watching this was absolute torture <laughs> it was unbearable yeah, it's, a, it's a load i so did not a, did not enjoy a second of it <laughs> no <laughs> i like the song ilare i mean i mean i like the abbotness of the whole thing it was very like Carnival Cruise, but also well, very cheerleading y. It was like a it was like a pep rally. The whole show is like a pep rally. Well, there's literally like sixty-five thousand people on that stage. But did you notice that when the Olsen twins sang, they cut out all audio from the set and it was just the recording of it wasn't even that they were lip syncing, they just cut out all sound from the stage. And that song was terrifying and scary. I'm yeah. the cute one. No, I'm yes, my sister. I'm the cute one. Oh god. Yes. Then that was interesting because I thought like that's probably the most high profile 
guest that they organized to come onto the show and it was probably the, the part of the show that would put kids to sleep the, the most quickly like that was, was like the most boring part it was so and, boring i mean but the Olsen uh, twins also don't do anything yeah <laughs> they're high profile but dull they're almost more boring than they are now and then just like the segments where like shusha has to talk to anybody like she's like asking them yeah. interview questions and you're like oh <laughs> oh no yeah you're just yeah you're biting your nails just crossing your fingers hoping the panda comes along and <laughs> like, again. See, it was <laughs> also kind of like double dare did you have double yeah. dare in australia dan yeah yeah we had an australian version of it and an american syndication see Whoa. it yeah yeah in australia it was american imports uh british imports and a bunch of australian stuff as well yeah australians so, only I have mean, like two of their own shows right yeah in australia right. it's all law and order <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly neighbors is, is neighbors yeah yeah, yeah neighbors <laughs> Yeah, you got, you got every, sing, every single Australian actor has been on Neighbors. Yeah, I oh, feel like... and Home and Away. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the competition for Neighbors. I don't know how old you are, Dan, but have you, do you ever see a show called Vidiot? Yes, Vidiot. Yeah, oh, I was watching so Vidiot when I was there in 92, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It was um, like music video quiz show or something. Yeah, that's, just that's exactly you. what it was, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, and because we didn't really have MTV or any widespread cable it was it was, it was like sky tv it's, it was like satellite instead of cable in the early 90s so no one had it no one had mtv and that was just like this kind of accommodation of the mtv <laughs> um idea for half an hour maybe each day yeah that was pretty good just a little a, a tiny dose of it the australians should have gotten together and done an uh, we want our mtv video and maybe I mean, listen, <laughs> yeah listened the best part of the show was her outfit her outfit was incredible oh yeah i mean on all the shows her outfit was incredible. yeah yeah she's kind of dressed like a like a um a majorette <laughs> yeah in the, in the in the olsen twins episode but like almost vaguely russian it's like a like a almost like a russian barbie doll the nutcracker um, yes. um i think yeah luda who is my source of knowledge on all of this who's my girlfriend, girlfriend. Who I live with here she said that it was basically like the original show was set up to resemble the nutcracker thing and the oh the, is, is that why the, there's toy soldiers yeah yeah the paquitas <laughs> the, the dancers who dance better than Shusha, but I don't know what I mean because she was kind of in the most zany uh, attention stealing outfit every time that right. you, you know, almost, almost don't even notice the, her, her staff. Shusha does pull focus. I mean, she is just like a stunning person and she's just always wearing these like the weirdest and they're like usually hot pants and like tall boots and like a weird hat. But like there's just something about every outfit. Older pads. Yeah, shoulder pads. But yeah, the the from the Olsen Twins episodes, her outfit is covered in little X's and she's also wearing little X earrings. Mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, that's branding. <laughs> that is branding. Her, her signature is at the end of the show, she puts on so much red lipstick and then she kisses kids on the cheek and like leaves the marks <laughs> on them. Yeah. This Which I guess I understand now why, I don't mean, there, we could guess why she didn't take off in this country, but like the, the articles that I was reading, it suggested that people just thought they were, she was like too sexual. I wouldn't say that was why. I think. I mean, I, I, I think someone figured, holy shit, she just rules the southern continent and why wouldn't she have the same luck? In, in any country but i mean the music and the performance and the sound and the, the energy it's not just a kid's product here like you hear the same music coming out of the bars it's just like this product th that everyone got into here i guess explaining whatever platinum sales and right. um it's kind of a hard thing to transplant and, and expect parents to uh, align with this national sound when it's just totally separate that's what i was kind of think i mean like the show just seems so foreign like it just see, i mean <laughs> you know and it's hard to, to point out which part of it is you know well, it's hard to exactly. look at something and say that doesn't belong in it's america just, or 
Every, anyway. Everything about it. So like the set is crazy. In the American version, she, a giant globe opens up and she walks down some stairs while she's singing the like, hello, <laughs> hello, hello, it's time for shoe shot. You know, and like all the kids are singing, but there's like literally like 300 kids on the stage. There's the Paquitas who are like hot girls dressed as toy soldiers. There's these two furry guys, a panda and a cheetah. <laughs> there are like, everyone's waving flags. The set moves. There's like a train that like kids are riding. There's like a gas station. I mean, it's mayhem. Yeah, it has like, a great theme park feel, I think. Yeah, like it's a small world from Disney yeah. World. I wrote down, it looks like the It's a Small World but, ride to like, the life. Culturally, no one has ever accused Americans of being like stodgy and formal, but when you compare them with Brazilians, they are. Like, <laughs> it's just, we do not have that kind of ebullience in this country. It's just it's such a Latin thing. I mean, to be that psyched. I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. Like the energy is very high. Americans only get that psyched when they're drunk. I was looking into like the production team behind this attempt to like capture the American audience for Shusha. And it's like really legit. Yeah, like they tried. <laughs> they, they like the, the people, they thought it was going to work. The production company is MTM, which is um, Mary <laughs> Tyler Moore's yeah. production company, who produced Hill Street Blues, WK. KRP, the Bob Newhart show, Newhart, Rhoda, Evening Shade. And then the, <laughs> the guy who like created the show, he created Kids Incorporated and the secret world of Alex Mack. The New York Times referred to him as the David E. Kelly of tween TV. So I think the actual problem here was her. I think they could have gotten someone who literally looked exactly like her and could sing and was American and it would have been fine. Yeah. Or I don't know. No, I'm saying they could have, I guess they could have done anything to it, but like they could have just taken that format and like her branding or whatever and just. Yeah, got someone who was ready because it's just this. Britney uh, Spears. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I'm trying to think like, uh, what is the difference between this, which seems like so weird and foreign to us and like the Disney club. Right. Mickey Mouse, sorry, Mickey Mouse club. Uh, Mickey Mouse club on crack. That's actually something I noticed being in this country like generally there's, there's just not a disneyfication of things at oh. all it's one of the, the most catholicized <laughs> cultures in the world mm -hmm. and it's also like the most hypersexual place what's going on it's like uh, i don't know man the disney part just isn't here like compared to in yeah. North America. Oh, yeah that's really I interesting know. i also the uh, big thought that i had when i was watching this show was like wow just seeing how many people are on the stage for this just uh makes me understand why brazil had such a bad covid problem yeah yeah for sure there's, <laughs> there's still like there's so many people. And the, also those double deer challenges. They, they were really gross. Like there was one that I watched. I think we both watched the episodes where the Olsen twins were the, the guest. And then this guy named the Butterfly Man was the guest. Who, if you assume that he had something to do with butterflies, you'd be wrong. He's actually a juggler. <laughs> he had the butterfly on his head. Yeah, he had a, I hope, was a fake. <laughs> no, no. Tattoo. I saw pictures of him older and... That that's a real that butterfly is still there there's one on the back of his head as well get out of here that's a real <laughs> tattoo <laughs> okay. according to a website called clownlink.com <laughs> Oh yeah, my yeah. god! I like fell on the floor <laughs> while I was watching that. I could not believe what I was seeing. I could not believe that like he balances a rose <laughs> yeah. on his nose while he's reciting a poem about he how he quit his career <laughs> as a chemist to become a juggler. It's transcended the the program, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um. I, I couldn't. It. And he was yeah, there are all these crazy moments on every episode that are just so wacky. Like absolutely insane. That when she gets a question about <laughs> yes. like what to do with a sick pet, she's like, okay, the panda will talk to you about that. And then he starts going on about a about taking your pet to the vet. And the footage is like alligators. Did you notice? 
this all of those segments were produced by Disney. Like they were produced yeah, by, yeah. Ep- by Epcot. So like mm-hmm. there was Mary Tyler Moore's production company, the <laughs> David E. Kelly of Tween TV and Epcot all thought Shoe Show was something to bet on. I mean, like seeing that, I thought, man, did they just do the whole show at Disneyland and drag in a bunch of kids and say, you're on this you're in this game, okay? Yeah. Now, it's called drop the balloon in this pool and you get a prize if you win or lose. Uh, and what are the prizes? They don't, there's no like product endorsement when they're given the prize. Who knows what the prizes are? On, on one of them, they're throwing fish into a hat and the like I thought the right. prizes must be so shit because the kids come in and just like grab the fish instead. That fish one, there was one kid who was just like throwing the game. <laughs> he was just like being crazy. But my my favorite was that Shushu was kind of a taskmaster in regards to the games and the rules. And yeah, also, totally bossy with yeah, that she was poker. Like, yeah, she was like, no, no, you lost. You, you, you dropped one. <laughs> yeah. You dropped one. Sorry. Yeah, the, there goes one of the points. Yeah, she was. <laughs> yeah, like she the, wasn't fucking around. Her like assistant was like tallying, and she's like, "No, he lost one." <laughs> I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> and she was also kind of like she, the way she interacted with these kids was really funny to me. She just kind of like wasn't that friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, when when she says uh, to the to the losers and the winners of these teams. Um, who do you want to send kisses to? And they're all saying like mom and dad. And, she and then she's like, mom and, says, dad, oh, mom, mom and dad, mom and dad. I was like, she's mocking these children. Oh, how boring. They want to say, send kisses to their mom and dad. <laughs> and you have to think like, man, that's kind of, is that the last message they're sending to their, their parents and <laughs> families? stuck in this place. yeah no it, it's it actually seems like just imagine it's a, like a little prison for children like this is what happens if you get lost at disneyland you end up <laughs> yeah. on shusha it's this like little prison where you're you're forced to like play these games which by the way like i was gonna say some of these games seemed very unsanitary the uh the third episode i watched the guest was the american gladiators because yeah I, yeah i was I, gonna I was going to send that through, but I thought, oh man, I'm, I'm already sending this butterfly <laughs> man episode. <laughs> Which, by the way, Dan, thank you. <laughs> hey, I, no worries. I, uh, I will never forget the butterfly man. So, dude, did you watch the American Gladiators one? No, I, um, I just watched the other butterfly man one. Yeah, he was, on, another he was on twice. <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. On twice. No, and I watched the other Olsen twins one, which oh, was wow. which was just as terrible. Boring as the first one. Yeah. Yeah. In the American Gladiators episode, the game is very funny because so the two teams are a pair of kids versus two American gladiators. <laughs> and like they're supposed to like run across the room, slide down a slide, and then they run over to this like bowl of jello, which they have to shove their faces into and pull out these little chips. With oh, I teeth. did watch that. A regular show for kids. You would think they would pair a kid with an American gladiator so it would be fair. <laughs> yeah. But no, yeah. it is two children versus two American gladiators and these American gladiators are not fucking around like they they are competing so like <laughs> they go first guy and laser are the the gladiators and they are going for it they like are serious about trying to win this so of course they do it so fast because they're incredible and then <laughs> they're American gladiators for Christ's sake and then the two kids go and like they suck and they lose. <laughs> like, and she's just like, yeah. sorry, you lose. Yeah, they're all losers, these kids on, on this show. Every it's single one of them. Totally insane. <laughs> and like, but like, and she's just, just like, it's okay, it's a game. <laughs> yeah. It's a game. I watched two episodes in a row and I felt like I was high. Like, I just like literally yes, felt. It's- there's a lucid effect you're left with, definitely. I mean, the songs are still in your brain for the rest of that day, probably the next day. 
they've been in my head all week and Luda yeah. will kill me if I don't stop singing these songs from her childhood <laughs> in a language that she didn't actually hear them in to begin with. And, and oh man, she was like, well, how do these people know who Shusha is? People here are just like stunned that Shusha is known <laughs> anywhere else. And they're excited to listen to this because they're going to send in their complaints for next week's housekeeping. Oh, I'm, sh- I, I'm but, sure, I'm sure <laughs> like we're getting everything wrong about Shusha. Uh, I'm just, this is just my impression as an outsider i'm like (laughs) but like i i literally i mean i have been obsessed with sous chef for basically my whole life because this show really made an impression on me because it was so weird but in brazil this is normal (laughs) this is normal behavior i can't imagine it being normal it is totally insane it's like carnival for kids with this like totally beautiful woman coating her lips with lipstick and kissing children around them <laughs> and it's so weird too like the kids it's supposed to be a prize i guess like who wants my kiss you know you <laughs> and the kids are always like so shy and she's like which cheek this one or this one the weirdest thing on the planet i thought of something else that has been exported from brazil and that is capoeira my college had a capoeira <laughs> team so it definitely stuck so i was also going to say acai berries but they're not specifically from brazil but those were hot for a while well what about um coffee <laughs> that's, that's you guys funny. drink that yeah that's, that's did you true. did they invent that <laughs> they've got good coffee yeah <laughs> dan do you know what bomb chia means good day. oh uh, yeah yeah um it means bomb what is, bomb means is good, good and chia is um day so okay. Bon noite, bon noite is good night. Okay, because that was, it seemed like that was from the Portuguese episode that I watched of Shusha. That seemed like her catchphrase. But wait, oh, can, that's can like you also everyone's say, catchphrase here. <laughs> bon dia. But can you also say dia bon? I, I've never heard people say it. I'll say oh, it to somebody and oh, see what they, what no, they oh, oh, I wanted to That was a it. polite way of saying no. Well, I've never no. heard yeah. someone say that. Hey, I'm a- I used to try to learn Portuguese and I knew it was bon dia, but then I just put into Google Translate to make sure and they said it was dia bon. Oh. Dia bon. Well, Good day. Let me see well I mean. Lying to you. Google. Yeah. Have I will show you this fucking screenshot. <laughs> You know, she, Google are she's mad. biased. You know biased what? Maybe case, maybe it's maybe it's Portuguese uh, Portuguese. Attacks. Maybe that's what they do in Portugal. Did you guys clock the uh the catchphrase from the American show? Everybody yes. drop a chicken. <laughs> yeah, drop the chicken. Santa yeah. Franca. Is that like a translation of like a Portuguese thing? Yeah, uh yeah. That's just saying go nuts. So <laughs> Everybody, yeah. drop, everybody, yeah. drop a chicken. <gasps> okay, you've solved you've solved a mystery for me because I also, you know, as a kid, I just remember this beautiful <laughs> blonde woman looks like Barbie, being like, "Everybody, drop a chicken," and then she yeah, says that's... it. She says it as if that's something people say. Yeah, I mean, and, and then you think, like, production wise, they were thinking that that would be perfect, you know? Um, right. Like, if she, if anyone can make everybody drop a chicken happen, it's Shusha, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it, like just to nonchalantly make it the, the, her catchphrase as if audiences are totally clear on what that means you know right right like, like we don't need we don't need any that i think that's what the, the the issue with the show is that it feels like it needs footnotes to like understand <laughs> what's going on you're just like okay 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 she's from brazil this means that in in portuguese okay now i'm getting it now i'm getting it but they really like kind of hang her out to dry yes yeah, like, 100 percent Oh man, it's oh, and I there were just like so many moments where I was just laughing so hard just because the ass shusha segments. Okay, so the the whole sh- <laughs> <laughs> the whole show felt very unrehearsed. So like there were segments where it's called ask shusha, and a letter appears where she has to read a letter, and it's not a long letter. It is like a five word sentence and sh- it is as if she has never seen it before didn't you give this to her <laughs> to practice right? well and i the- saw that she made four episodes in a day Whoa. like over the time they were making the episodes yeah in like five weeks 
or, yeah. or something. I, I mean, you can totally see it in some of them when she's coming out of that cracked planet Earth. That she's <laughs> just yeah. Here we go again. Yeah, and, she's um, like, oh, like she's her like, whole world is definitely cracked. Yeah, she's just as dazed as we are watching, you know. Yeah, and the kids too. They're like, man, uh, another one. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. I was just like trying to figure out like the timeline of when these episodes were filmed because it seems like Jam and Jelly, the furries, like <laughs> their relationship with Shusha was very funny to me because she would just not know how to say something because her grasp of English was not solid enough in order to be able to anchor a whole show. So they give her these things to do, you know, like read this very simple letter and she'd mess it up really badly and like every time messed up the kids' names too. It'd be like, Shusha, tell us how to cure sick animals. And then she'd be like, Janice? Ja yeah, yeah, it is Janice, and like then one of the furries would be like, "It's Janice," and then just like that made me really laugh. Oh, the other one I watched the guest was um, Waylon Jennings. Whoa! <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you've never seen such a uh, bored audience and, and, like these kids yeah. trying to figure out like where they are, and I think that's the <laughs> the, the motif generally with this. Nobody knows. What they're doing on the or show what's, or in the what's audience happening. or what, yeah that probably goes straight to anyone who remembers this struggling to, to decide if it was something that actually happened because i mean because it, it's, it, it's like you've been invited to a reality that doesn't exist no one yeah no it, one knows what's going on it really it really does feel like it's just from an alien planet how everyone is interacting how the the show progresses you're just like there's Nothing about this that seems normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Her grasp of, of English isn't cohesive, but neither is the structure of the show at all. Right. <laughs> it's, it's <like> right. <laughs> Right. The, oh. the awesome twins episode, gloop time. Where was the gloop? <laughs> and she's like, gloop, gloop, gloop. Rachel, you have how many children? Two. And I mean, you're probably watching today's um, attempts at getting children's attention. Like, what would you, what would you say? is the the big difference obviously oh. it's a lot more like sedate and shusha but uh, do you like any of the new shows i can't think of any so they mostly like cartoons so the only things that they watch that have been live action have been i can only think of one it's called henry danger and it's like a nick show and it's a kid who takes a part-time job as a superhero's assistant <laughs> and it's actually pretty good <laughs> So um, no furries or um, no, yeah, no. It's, like, I mean, that's the thing. This Mizusha <laughs> thing is so, and, and then my kids were never really into Sesame Street either because Sesame Street moved over to HBO like right when they were born, mm -hmm. and then you had to have an HBO account to watch them, and mm -hmm. they actually know all the Sesame Street characters from the like we have so many Sesame Street books, but they do not know them from the show really. I can't think of any other shows like this. I mean, it's like Sabado Gigante. It's just like as a variety show, right? Right. I mean, I can't think of it. And also, it's it's also like kind of live, and like no one mm. watches anything live yeah. anymore. It's it's everything is streamed, and then I mean, they've watched all of Teen Titans like five times. Like they just it, they get to the last episode, like, all right, it's time to start over, <laughs> go back over again. I can't think of anything like this. Yeah, you're you're right because in terms of kids programming, there used to be like shows like my mom used to watch a show called Romper Room. Yes, and there there was also like Lamb Chop, kind of had this vibe too, where there was like a lady talking to the audience. <laughs> of course, like not as totally insane as Shusha, <laughs> but it was somewhere in the same like like neighborhood I guess but yeah I don't think there is that really anything for kids now that's sort of as like presentational as this I don't know no I think they're mainly situational comedies on Disney and Nick you know like Hannah Montana and stuff like that and it also seems like there's so much intention uh when designing a kid's show I mean like you know a few decades ago they hadn't figured out how much psychology to invest in what kids watch and what becomes popular for kids they wouldn't be so daring to to present this uh, <laughs> as, as a gamble anymore like they just wouldn't no th this this show despite the fact okay so like the set is amazing it was actually like nominated for an emmy for like set design which like yeah 
Okay. Yeah, like they're getting accolades. Had a had this star who. Well, it's a classic uh, cultural misunderstanding. It was just. Yeah, it's just like totally misses the mark. I mean, we had Double Dare, and right. um, there was a show I really liked called. And the only thing I show show that's the only kind of game showy thing I could think of that I ever watched. And then there was one called. Um, it was a brother against sister, and they'd have. And I could. That's why I was bumped because I could never oh. get the show because I didn't have a brother. Um, yeah, I remember. It was like I'm telling. Was. I'm telling. They would pit them against each other with these trivia questions. Like, oh, so this is this is something you're like you have to guess what your sister said about you pre-show. So it's like the the newlywed game. Yes, yeah, sir. It was like the newlywed game, but for siblings. Okay. <laughs> That sounds and then, fun. And then in the end, they'd get to run around and just like grab things and take them home. Please. I was telling you about that game show I used to watch called Fun House. Oh yeah, I never clicked on the link. <laughs> oh, you should. So Fun House, it was like on network TV. It was also syndicated and there was Double Dare challenges. It was literally the poor man's Double Dare because Double Dare was on cable and Fun House was syndicated. And so like people without cable could watch something akin to Double Dare. And so like there would be siblings on teams and they'd be competing in these challenges and at the end the like the winning team would get to there was this giant fun house set that that the winning team would get to go into and there would be like prizes in there like a like a bmx bike or like a or game boys yeah or game boys and like yeah we had that actually yeah we had well an adaptation of that but that and was like, called am amazing it was called amazing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But like, you had like 60 seconds to pull as many prizes out of this fun house set. And okay. sometimes they got nothing at all. They, yeah, they just like couldn't get past the fun house set. So, I mean, but I was actually on, not on fun house, but um, the fun house team came to our local water park <laughs> in my town and they like did like like a remote segment and my dad and I got selected out of the crowd to participate in a challenge and the challenge was my dad and me and then like someone's mom and their you know their kid or whatever and <laughs> the parents had to smear peanut butter on our faces the children's faces and then throw jelly beans at our faces and whoever had the most stick one this is all for like a public audience at the, at yeah the, 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 park? The, it was like you know it was like a live event it was like kind of like a state fair kind of thing where we're like we're uh, we're coming in to see this show or whatever and that that was it <laughs> and uh we won did you already check to see if there was a video of you online doing that oh i haven't i haven't checked oh that's that makes me really scared, but I do. I do what did you win? I won. We have two t-shirts, which I still have. And um, <laughs> we got hats and we got a fun house game, like a game version of fun house, which was sort of like mousetrap. When I hear fun house, I just keep thinking of the Robert Smigel production oh, yeah. company. From uh, TV's fun, fun, fun house, house, TV, fun, fun house. house. Oh, okay. So what's the most nineties thing? <laughs> <laughs> The whole thing. Probably the, the, whole Olsen, thing. the Olsen twins, probably. The Olsen twins. Uh, her clothes, the shoulder pads, her clothes. Yeah. What I wrote down was... The joy is the most 90s. The joy, the unabashed joy. <laughs> but again, she always seems so, like, kind of gruff. Yeah, she's bossy. Yeah, she's bossy. <laughs> and so, like, it, it's just really funny to me that they're like, this is the queen of the children. And I'm like, really? <laughs> she doesn't really seem to like children that much. She's, like, going down the line, like, what's your name? I Say mean, how it. could you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how could anyone like them? They're little yeah, monsters. These kids can't, can't <laughs> Uh, catch, catch fish i know she's like really judges them for their ability like they're like oh sorry boo like she was she, <laughs> so, her yeah. inflection was booing people like she's like well, boo. She's, i mean it kind of is her being on their level slightly because yeah. that's how i saw it i think the queen of the children thing kind of comes from she's kind of the princess diana of brazil in a way yeah like she's got all this charity well, she's like, like history with charity and brought like uh immunization of polio to wow. like half the children in the country or something in the 80s so oh, uh, wow, she's got all this nice. prestige and then so you know i guess that comes in as well when you trying to show like an entirely different country hey here's this like people who are keeping like uh half a continent's children alive and I mean, this uh other countries like what 
you know. I guess that's she fair. Can't, she can't even talk, she can't even say in, in, any English. So. <laughs> that weird movie that she made where she has sex with a twelve year old. That's got to be really bad year <laughs> for her with her, her like Queen of the Children. Well, that um, article I yeah. read said <laughs> yeah. that like Brazilians don't really. Care. I care about that because basically to break into the movie business in Brazil, you have to do you to like pose naked and do whatever you have to do. So it's pretty yeah. common. And have you seen kind of practical? Like, I mean, it's just your right. way of life. I mean, right. They're like, here are my boobs. Yeah. Like, here are everybody's like, so boobs. So what? <laughs> yeah. Everybody drop a chicken and take off your yeah. bra, you know? Well, it's so hot. I mean. My most 90s thing is the way she ended the uh, Olsen Twins episode. She said, I'll be back. Oh, Hasta yeah. la vista, baby. <laughs> she couldn't even get that right it was like no i know tilted she was trying so hard yeah and then she descends back into her home and yeah she goes back up the back of the stairs and then the world literally closes around her and makes sense again i have a mad magazine you do what is it shut up <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I I had shut up as well. Oh, okay. but I also but I had sh- um shoot ya, shoot ya, uh, um, oh, dark. I mean, oh. like yeah, because she her games were kind of dark, you know. Oh well, she treated the kids um like it was in uh, some military task, yes. and I mean, you know, like, like you, fe- get fill in the line. rest yourself, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yellow team, green team, <laughs> green team, go. Or just sugar. I mean, this whole thing reminds me of sugar a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like these kids, I don't know what they did to them to get them to behave in this way around Shusha. I mean, they seem like out of their minds. Mine is more of a visual parody. It's XO, XO, a kiss. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just it's a thinker. So nice. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's too nice it's for supposed to be scathing dan sent me a, an actual mad magazine cover with shusha on it a brazilian mad magazine oh yeah yeah oh man and she's like breastfeeding Alfred Eagle, Alfred yeah, Newman, yeah it's, it's like a lot hornier in brazilian mad magazine like really yeah yeah there's, there's, no. all, there's always like some like <laughs> pretty sexual gag like right on the cover no uh, <laughs> that what's I, going yeah. on what's going on down yeah. there dan yeah, i told you the lack of disney it's just you have to answer for brazil's cries <laughs> i'm trying alfred realize... newman is like at the door of shusha's house and I'm her husband is his her husband is strangling him while shusha is breastfeeding a baby with <laughs> alfred newman's face oh, oh no. is philia philia is that kid baby what's philia Ah, uh, yes. Pileja Shusha. <laughs> and that's a play on Pileja Puta, which is son of a bitch or son of a oh. slut. So, yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Mad. Just... <laughs> Pileja, oh, his daughter. Yeah. Wow. But she, yeah, she had a daughter. Okay, right. Got it. Got oh. it. Oh my God. I mean, and that's, that proves that she was a huge thing though. Like cover of Mad. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's like cover of Vogue. Cover yeah, of Mad can, and can, Playboy. I mean, it's making it. Well, I mean, Shusha, like to be fair, what is she like the richest female entertainer in Brazil? Like to this day, she's like yeah, worth yeah. like $400 million. Yeah, I think she's definitely like the second richest female entertainer or in the whole continent. That's <laughs> and, nuts. <laughs> and and then in the um, yeah northern continent, it's this thing that may or may not have actually happened. Yeah, yeah. That's, when, you, when you look at it like that, it, it, yeah, it is so weird that she would be like the biggest thing in South America. Can't get away from her, and then in North America, she's just like someone's fever dream, like someone's weird ass memory that they can't even place. Who is this someone you speak of? Me. That someone. <laughs> My, my, uh, it's my fever dream. Okay, Val, are you ready to stop talking about Zusha? Shusha. No, <laughs> no. You might have to do your own recording in the closet. Just your like True, thoughts. Truly, like I, I was. I just like I'm ready to segue out, but I don't know if you're ready. <laughs> no, we we can segue out, but I do have to say that I was like I'm nervous about 
recording today because I feel like I won't talk about everything I wanted to talk about and feel disappointed. <laughs> like I was like, oh yeah, god, this... I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna biff it and okay. So was, next it, week you'll have a half an hour of housekeeping. Okay? Yes, half an hour Shusha housekeeping. I think you should do your own bonus episode, and I won't be there, and you can just record <laughs> it. Poor and then I'll listen to it later. Rachel, no, you won't. Poor Rachel does not care about Shusha. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> People like you who kept her out of America. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, Rachel. Like xenophobic <laughs> against blonde, tall women. <laughs> you know, uh, well, there's what you're watching, but we're kind of just still the same watching the same stuff. That's right. Well, oh, well, what's Dan watching? What that's are you right. watching? Okay, so there's this really cheap version of the those 90s anthology like horrors and thrillers. The, you know, uh, Outer Limits, and there was another one, Perversions of Science uh, from HBO. Like, oh. okay, so I, I was watching all those, and then I remembered one from Australia that I knew would just be, like, so lackluster if I tried to find it on YouTube, and I found it, and sure enough, uh, it's called Twisted. It's hosted by uh, that guy, Brian, Brian Brown from Cocktail. He's oh! Just, he's a, <laughs> so, like, I don't know, it, it's just him stepping in for you know, what would usually be like the Crypt Keeper or, or whatever. <laughs> I've never heard of Perversions of Science. Oh yeah, that's no, like a, I think that was like a, uh, like a. But it's from the 90s, if from the 90s, we could put it on the show. Yeah, we should do it. Have Dan back. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, perversions. you want me back? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perversions of Science. Yeah, I think. Uh, what a uh, title. It's on, it's on YouTube. Big, that's the crazy title. Yeah, yeah, it's on YouTube. No, I loved Outer yeah. Limits. I was obsessed with Outer Limits. Well, I think because of the success of Tales from the Crypt, they want to turn another EC, the like EC comics. Oh, okay. Like they had done with the horror comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they they thought we'll try it with the science fiction, mm. or, um, like 50s science fiction EC as well. Oh my God. I and love the Tales it, from the Crypt where Danny DeVito is married to the twins. Yes, that's that one's iconic. And then he accidentally gets a, like a weird mark he get, sunburn on his back. He gets a weird... To catch him. Yeah, he's, he, pretending, he's pretending to be... Tw- he, he falls asleep with like a his robe open or something and like there's a distinctive mark and then that's how they catch him that he's pretending... Literally he, think about that every time I'm applying sun, sunscreen. Yeah, the Danny <laughs> DeVito in Tales from the crypt. Don't yeah. want to get a mark. I'll be caught. You should probably not marry two twins and pretend to be like two different men. Oh, I... it's Joe Pesci. Oh, you're right. Ah! It's Joe Pesci. Yeah. It is Joe Pesci. <laughs> they have had very similar careers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you, well, you had me convinced it was Danny DeVito for a minute. I was imagine, I was like, yeah, that is a good episode. <laughs> is it really Danny DeVito? Oh, I mean, it's similar. So, uh, but, I, I, but um, just just briefly, the 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 moral of the story about watching the Australian um, attempt at this uh, was that uh, I mean, right from the first episode, I saw that like it was a, a rip off of uh, one of the, the plots from yeah either Outer Limits or Tales from the Crypt or one of them, and I kept watching it just to see how many more plots they ripped off. That's what I'm watching. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going to be watching that. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, th- yeah, I don't recommend it, but. Um, <laughs> Don't that's you the question was what you're watching so uh, rachel and i are both still watching mayor of east town so which yeah i mean i don't know if we want to discuss it because it's just going to turn to a mayor of east town show we can just yeah. rate we can just rate each episode like abc yeah. what would you think of the last like, episode two it was pretty good it's kate winslet's it, accent improving or i mean she worse. she had a she had a no it's really good actually and she had a monologue at the second episode i was like she's getting it she's, yeah 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 she was staring out the window and crying i'm like she okay. was really like impressing me with the accent. I was like, oh yeah, all right, keep going, girl. But uh, not to spoil anything, but one of the plot developments of the show did remind me of did you ever see that Jake Gyllenhaal movie Prisoners? Oh yeah. Yeah, which that's I thought, pretty good. I think that's a great movie. It's about like a kid that goes missing, and the dad is played by Hugh Jackman, Australian royalty. Yeah. Australian royalty? <laughs> that guy. Have you heard of him, Dan? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it wasn't it Joe Pesci? That... <laughs> oh, yeah, he was Joe Pesci. Hugh Jackman, uh, his like kid goes missing, a young kid, and what is it? Jake Gyllenhaal is plays the cop. Is he suspected? Oh, he's the cop. No, he's the cop who's like trying to figure it out. But Hugh Jackman is like 
You know what? I think I figured it out. It's obviously this weird guy in my neighborhood who is super weird. And he keeps trying to convince the cops like, no, could you look to this guy? Like he's weird. And so then Hugh Jackman just like slowly loses his mind and decides to take the law into his own hands and like kidnaps and tortures the weird guy played by Paul Dano. Tell me the end. The, it's the, not him. Well, of course it wasn't him. He, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. So I do like a, a parent who is like, I'll get justice for my kid. Well, but it's they're... even darker when you saw that parent be an absolutely horrible, disgusting parent. Correct. <laughs> this episode. Correct. Just Only like, oh, good okay. parents can grieve and take revenge. Right. Um, but I watched something else, which is not a show, but I, I watched um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood for the first time. Oh. The, the latest Tarantino. Mm-hmm. Did you guys see that? Yes. <laughs> just do it and watch it you look like you're trying to not tell me something though i just yes. i i really don't like that movie you don't like it why I, I just think i mean it is five hours long i think it's uh super lazy it has nothing to say and right it seems like greg and i were just like what's gonna happen what's gonna happen what's gonna happen and then we get to because it's all about the Manson murders but right. they don't happen to the very end and then the end it turns out to be revenge fantasy kind of where like yeah. there's and an alternate it, reality where like something better happens than and the really hero happen. the hero ends up being this white guy who you know it's like Leonardo DiCaprio I mean it's just so gross and violent and I thought it was like stupid <laughs> <laughs> like it just like has has nothing to say and is just like really flashy and I don't know did I you think... see it Dan no because of uh reviews like this I, I mean and it's five hours I, I just you know, <laughs> ignore its half. existence well I what how do you describe Tarantino like I still enjoy watching his movies even if upon reflection you're like that wasn't the greatest but like they have their own style they have their own look they have great music it's still like a dependable enjoyable watch so like until the end I was, we were like intrigued like where is he going with this you know because I really had no idea so I was so pissed off like there's <laughs> did you see it coming <laughs> I was so pissed off I, I yeah of course I was just like <laughs> we didn't we were like what's gonna happen <laughs> and then, it's just so da- like like Leonardo DiCaprio is like this washed up actor he's so loathsome and like we're supposed to like oh wow he saves the day by like incinerating people with like this flamethrower it's gross I mean but it's isn't, gross. isn't Tarantino's whole thing revisionist tor- history but, but but it's it's gore right I mean he's supposed yeah. to be like a b-movie auteur I guess, kind of, right? I, guess. I mean it's but not then, supposed to be but then he's just like, cinema. He, he acts like oh wow look at look at me like i'm making sharon tate a character and like she gets to live spoiler she gets to live and it's like <laughs> yeah but she doesn't do anything in the movie her character doesn't isn't active like if Sharon Tate took the gun and was incinerating people that would be something but no we just get to see her gross feet and like her like going to see a movie she does nothing that character does nothing no she doesn't do nothing she does you're right like I I was thinking after I saw it like god they gave it Margaret would be nothing to do and she's third build right exactly and her face is on the cover and she basically does nothing the whole movie and like the whole idea is like okay this is what would happen if the Manson murders didn't happen all right but like it doesn't matter it's not like Sharon Tate did anything <laughs> I also just thought the whole the, the that comedy sequence where um Brad Pitt beats up Bruce Lee is I just thought it was racist <laughs> it's like so it's supposed to be funny Brad Pitt's just like I could beat you up and then they get into a fight and he does. I was like, what? What? I just, I, I from, from start to finish, I really, really hated it. It was supposed to set up for us that he was capable of beating someone up, I guess. But Oh, I guess. But not for me. <laughs> well, it was all very weird. But because it was, I guess I found the weirdness interesting instead of repelling. I was like. Yeah. Anyway, there's yeah. there's stuff. I, there's uh, there's obviously like, I like the, the costumes and I liked some of the performances. But like, I just, I think it added up to something that I just didn't like. I mean, and he definitely could have cut 45 minutes out of the movie. Uh, yeah. And did but you every hear- movie is so long now, inexplicably long. I right. mean. Did you hear that like there was a 27 hour cut of that movie or something? And I like was like. The, the day that we went, watched it, I of course have to have IMDb open while I watch a movie. 
Something. Uh -huh. Okay, that's yeah, got it. Uh -huh. Wait, how old is he? Okay, yeah, <laughs> He's going through. And and when I googled it, what came up was Margot Robbie says there's a 20 hour director's cut, and I was like, uh, what a coincidence. I, I'm not watching that. Uh, no, one, no one's watching it. Fuck off. I mean, <laughs> um, but Mayor of Easttown is good. It is. We have to watch it week by week, like a normal, I know, old, what, like in the olden days, which is what kind of nice. What a drag. But it sounds like that's what uh, people in Brazil do all the time. So we're just being Brazilians. <laughs> just watching things in real time and turning our lights on and off. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Or if, right. okay, so, like, You're like, I'm glad that guy in, in, got in murdered. Show. I'm glad that guy yeah, got yeah. murdered. Yeah, or I'm angry that they got murdered and it's time to yell about it out the window and <laughs> maybe even bang some pots and pans. That, that It's been known to happen. It keeps things spicy. It's, it yeah, fun. yeah. I mean, I'm not even watching any of the shows, but if there's some racket going on. Is that a thing that you're, you're always trying to figure out? Like, what was the thing that sparked the noise? Sometimes Ludo just knows she'll <laughs> she'll be she'll be aware that it's like a, a big development happening that day in whatever show, Big Brother or like an actual drama. Or it'll just be the president gave an address and that's when things really erupt, but they kind of sound the same, just <laughs> <laughs> telling in a way. It sounds a lot like the, the night Barack Obama won the election in Philadelphia. Yeah, that was pretty. Or oh, yeah. in Columbus, Ohio, when the Ohio State football team wins. <laughs> they like flip over cars and like destroy streets it's just insane all right well dan has to get to sleep i know thank you so much dan this was really fun yeah thank you thanks for uh helping me understand this thing that's we don't know how to pronounce yet I, I yeah think. we still don't we still don't know anything about shisha so yeah we know nothing. i hope i helped you understand a little bit as uh, well yeah we know nothing great we'll have to go and watch them all yeah that's and, what you're gonna do probably isn't it yeah it, it is right so rachel won't be able to escape it next week she'll be like uh, <laughs> i'll be like what what am i watching more shisha <laughs> and let me tell you in detail what happened in this one <laughs> <laughs> she should be like, no, the podcast is over. Okay. Anyway, the podcast is over. So. All right. Thank you, Dan, for Good. joining us all the way from Brazil. Brazil. Bon chia. <laughs> Bon night. Drop a chicken. Everybody, <laughs> drop a chicken. Okay. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.